Welcome to the maiden edition of Sports Reaction. We'll be looking at the state of African football, player exodus and facilities and where the projection of Africa when it comes to sports in the next 10 years. Tonight to help me to discuss this, I'm joined by Ace Brockerstar, TV journalist, a sports, a sports commentator, Dr. Kweku Ofosu Asar. Kweku, good to have you on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Kweku, the state of African football, Africa has been lacking behind with respect to our counterparts over in Europe. Uh, you look at our facilities and the training pitches, uh, grassroots football, we're lacking behind. What's your take on state of African football at the moment? Okay, thank you very much. I mean, in relative terms, I mean, we, you're right in saying that we're lacking behind if you compare African pitches or African training grounds uh, to or with uh, European uh, ones. Um, in Africa, the problem has been the lack of the needed investment in these areas. It's something that we have uh, not taken seriously, we've crossed over, but in my view, is seriously affecting the development of our game. I mean, when you talk about development of football or sports in general, you're looking at hunting for talent, you're looking at facility development or infrastructure uh, provision, and you're looking at coaches. So back to your question of facilities. I mean, you realize that where we play, uh, we haven't realized that the game has changed tremendously and yes. we've moved away from where people used to play gota to gota. When I was a kid, we were playing gota to gota. Yeah, then yeah. you play on sandy grounds and what have you, gravels and what have you. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, we've, when you have poor facilities or poor pitches, mm -hmm. now one thing you have to note is that it affects the pattern of play. It affects the game tremendously. Mm -hmm. It affects um, the, the way even you tackle. You, you, yes, you, you cannot slide tackle, you are very conscious of that. Um, the field is bumpy, you cannot f have a free flow football, and then it also affects, uh, contributes to uh, regular injuries of players and even their recovery. So it's an area that uh, we haven't done too well. I know that in some countries they are working hard on that, uh, on, on, on this particular area, but if you look at Africa in general, we, we are lacking behind with regards to infrastructure provision. If you, I think South Africa relatively, you know, I've been to say yes, I've been to South Africa several times. You go to South Africa, you see that they relatively they are better. Uh, with regards to Ghana, for instance, that is a huge problem. I I remember that um, we went for one of the African games in South Africa, and uh, where one of the athletes got injured, and um, the the Masua or the the tech, the the medical person who was um, who, yeah who was uh, mass, who was treating this athlete of ours yeah. asked where the athlete was training, and then the the reason then they asked him why he was asking that and he said it was because the athlete's uh, muscles were ill developed and ill placed. Mm -hmm. So you see that if you don't even train on the right pitch, mm -hmm. your muscles do not develop as yeah, expected, wow. and. Um, when you watch African African teams or African players, you rel you, you you will agree that uh, when they move to Europe, they have difficulty in slight tackling. Exactly. Because, yeah. because yes, because of where they they train, and so I think that on the whole, now we have some of the teams coming in with um, what do you call it with uh, as, yes, like in Wafa for instance has a very good pitch in Ghana for instance, uh, but then we also don't pay attention to the field development, like groundsmen, as, as is done in Europe, uh, when to water, when to do testing even of the soil. It's, it's, it's now developed scientifically. And so you need to attach a lot of uh, science to it. Even um, in Europe now, they use the pitches to adopt the strategy that they'll be playing. Let's say that maybe Madrid will be playing against Barcelona and the coach wants to adopt a certain strategy. He can even uh, advise the groundsman to, 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 to do it in such a way that it will suit them, exactly. the home side. Quick pass but yes, yes, ball. and all that. But we don't have that in Africa, unfortunately. That and brings uh, us back to the question, uh, <coughs> my next question. It's been argued over the few years um, about half competition of African football, mm. their support and what they've contributed to African football over the few years. People have argued and said that half has really let African down in terms of our facilities, in terms of our football. Obviously, you know the FIFA uh, rule says about um, uh, government supporting, uh, government supporting and building facilities to push the agenda of football <coughs> forward. 
How has legislation from CAF been as well in governing the whole entirety of African football? Because mm. there's been too much loose ends in our football where you don't see CAF putting a stamp on his feet. African teams having uh, a lot of coup d'etats, a lot of things happening in terms of tournaments and things like this. So with infrastructure even in place, how has legislation been for us as Africans? Well, I'm not too clear about uh, the coup d'etat in this sense. Uh, <laughs> uh, but then uh, with regards to uh, regulations, I think that the rules are there. I mean, uh, we have every rule in the book, especially in Ghana, in Africa, and whatever. You, the, the thing has been in, with regards to implementation and um, the sanctioning and whatever. You, uh, if you look at... Uh, there, there are rules that you have to play the game. The, the game, uh, you have to provide a certain standard. Standard, okay. okay. Yes, uh, for instance, the facilities must uh, uh, measure up to a certain standard. But it's up to the implementers who say, look, uh, maybe you walk in here and you say, okay, this pitch is up to this calf standard or up to international standard we can play, and 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 therefore I think that well, calf ha calf as a body has has. has uh, done well, but I think that there is more that they can do with regards to growing the game in Africa. Fogu, let me ask you this. If, if you take a look at African football now, where do you see African football in the next 10 years? Mm, that's a good question. African football in the next 10 years. Uh, you, you see, you cannot grow the game, in my view. I mean, you cannot grow the game without the involvement of uh, proper policies, uh, implementation of the policies, or implementing the policies to the requisite standard. You cannot grow the game without um, uh, corporate body investment or involvement, because uh, when if you when you talk about facilities, in some countries you have uh, corporate bodies supporting, supporting with the implementation of uh, with uh, the provision of some of these facilities. You have corporate sponsorship and other. You you have clubs also making the conscious effort to develop their own pitches. pitches the Egyptian in North Africa, they, they are very good at that. They mm -hmm. even um, they have an all-round uh, facilities. They have they have uh, football pitches. They have stadiums for f football uh, football teams. Well. They have for volleyball for mm -hmm. all those things, indoor games and what have you. In this western part of Africa, that's where we're talking about Ghana, where we come from. I mean, these things are lacking, and over the years we have not done enough to uplift these uh, facilities. Uh, the other aspect has been the maintenance of these facilities. I mean, Ghana hosted African Cup of Nations 2008. Has, uh, we spent so much so money much to money refurbish our cross sport stadium, the commercial sports stadium. We built Esipon, we built um, Tamale, Tamale mm. but maintenance, mm. I mean, has been celebrated lacking behind. So if you, if you want to grow the sport, you, and another thing that we, we, we need to factor into consideration is that um, the economy of the country also contributes. Also plays a yeah, yes. factor as if well. the economy is, is doing well, corporate bodies will be able to. Sponsorship. Yeah, yeah sponsorship country. packages and other things mm -hmm. will be coming in. Yeah. But if the, con if, if, the, if the economy takes a nosedive or plummets mm -hmm. down or, or, or declines, then you have uh, corporate bodies are not being in a position to fully uh, support the development of of, of uh, the game. What happens in Africa, unlike in Europe, and particularly in Germany, where you have corporate bodies owning the teams. The teams, yeah. And so yeah. they have their image attached, attached to their team. To clubs, yeah. So they make sure that everything is measured up to the needed standard. One of the, one of, that brings me to the next topic. One of the key things about African football I've been very passionate about, and I know you've traveled across the continent, various countries, and uh, different, met different dialects, and uh, every area of the game of football. Kogu, in all your traveling, in all your traveling, I believe as Africans, in a way, we've lost our identity along the way with our expression of football because we express our football through our culture. What do you think about Africans projecting our culture through our football? Uh, because I believe Africa as a, as a, as a continent we have a distinctive way of expressing ourselves when it comes to football. Mm. Over the few years, we don't get to see that. What do you think has caused these things along the line that we've lost our identity as Africans, where we used to see the long screamers, the volleys, 
uh, coming from about 40 yards and about 30 yards. These days, we don't get to see them anymore. Hmm. What is the cause of these? Yeah, things? yeah, that's a good point. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, in Brazil, for instance, I mean, Africans can, Africans are, com you can compare Africans to Brazilians or to Latin Americans. You see, they, they also are allowed to express themselves and they have the skills and all that. Yes. But what has affected us is that we have not been able to improve upon the techniques of the game. You know, so let's say you move to Europe and you're playing, in, say, for instance, in England, and you're not supposed to over-express yourself on the ball. Exactly. Because let's say the team is moving forward, you need to, you need to string your passes quickly, you, you're not supposed to maybe dance around and all that. Be more tactical. Yes, so in a tactical play, when you lose the ball, how do you position yourself, how do you recover, mm. and all that. So those are the things that we need to blend with our game. And unfortunately, uh, we're not developing it to the extent that we have these young ones being taught as expected, uh, but early. Yeah. Okay, and then when we come, when we also come to Europe, it takes us too long a time to adapt. The Brazilians are able to adapt quickly because over there, there's a national policy, there's a conscious effort, which takes them through. You the know, lines. yes. So as they're growing, so they acquire the skills. They, you know, and they they, they develop. Very well. in Ghana or in Africa, mostly it's left with. Uh, um, philanthropies or people who have the passion for the game. Uh, you have an individual who is training them at the coast Personal level. Finances. Yes, and Trying all that. Yes, philo uh -huh. so, but I think that what would let us take the game forward and to get us have our identity, I should say, is that we need to inculcate in them right from the beginning and we need to have a national policy, a system or a national system that they will play throughout. Okay, we we'll play it at the, at the course level, at the academy level, at the league level. So if you are handling maybe how the work of Kotoko or you're handling the national team, you only have to tinker with a few tactics. But the basic, should the basics, through. yes, you should cut through. Should cut so through. when you pick a ball, for instance, you should you can tell that, oh, this is a Ghanaian, this is an African. The, when a, a Latin American or a Brazilian picks the ball, you can say that this is a Brazilian. Brazilian. When a Brazilian is standing behind a, a, a free kick and he curves it, you know that this is a Brazilian. Okay, so by that they've been able to stamp their identity on the game. Mm -hmm. If you take our, 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 even in music, for instance, entertainment, look, we have lost it. Our, 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 our musicians are just copying, they are imitating, and the, the lyrics are so gone and all Jamaican that. Yes, okay. Yeah. Look at the Jamaicans. They haven't lost their reggae. No. When he's playing, you know that this is a Jamaican. This is, this is coming from uh, Jamaica. This is the root root reggae. The, it's coming from... Look at Jamaica, for instance. You mentioned Jamaica. That brings to mind. Look at Jamaica has made a conscious effort to be, to develop sports. Athletics, for instance, they've made conscious efforts to the develop it. Yes, and, uh, you know, Asafo Powell, Asafo and, Powell and, and uh, Johan, you, Johan, Johan, Blake, Johan Blake and others. And see, and the, and the ladies. Yeah. And you see, it's it's shot Jamaica to a certain level. I took the trouble to look at how they've come, what they did, and you see that it runs through the educational system Consistent effort. consistently. Consistent you see, effort. so it was a national policy to take athletics or sports to a certain level. That brings me to the next question, where grassroots football, grassroots football, a major, major, major problem across the continent of Africa, especially where in a continent where our first love has always been football, you look at a country like Ghana, where most about, probably about young men of 12 years, 10 years, 7 years, almost everyone plays football. But how many academies do we have back home in Ghana? How many people are ready to express themselves through academy and be fit as well? It's always been that thin line between education and playing football. So where, where, we, where what I want to find out tonight from you, that... What do we do as Ghanaians, especially when it comes to grassroots football? Because we're losing a massive ground hold in our football from the tender age. So what do we do as Ghanaians? What do, we, do we invest back into grassroots football? Do we build more academies? What's the way forward for us as Ghanaians? A young man, a young boy coming up, or a young girl coming up, for that matter. And that, that's another interesting um, question. I mean, uh, if things are, uh, if you look at the Ghanaian system or football system, for instance, um, you realize that there is 
serious problem. There, 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 there are two schools of thought about the academy and the coach. Mm. Okay, whether we have moved away from the coach system and we are having the academy and we are not faring too well or not. Now, what you have to also take into consideration is that who are those running the academy? What is the objective of the academy? Mm. Do we have a policy guideline for the academy? Are those the coaches, how how trained are they? What is their level? Are they still doing the old course? Are they what are or they doing? Yes, things. yes, or doing things. Or we have coaches that have been trained, have been to a certain level that the uh, what do you call it? They can uh, train these boys as expected. Mm-hmm. Now that's one point because I don't think we do have uh, people who have been world. I don't think we do. And a few we do have as well. Uh, funny thing, a few, a few we do have, uh, they come in, train these boys, and sell them back to Europe. Yes. You see, so, so it's like a conveyor belt. Now, the, the concern is that uh, the investment they make, they're not thinking of how to let these boys improve and fit into the league system. They're, they're interested in, in, in expo- exporting them. And uh, them. Yes, and then, and then uh, having a return on investment. Those who are a bit okay, the, some of the coaches, I think that we need to do more to train them. Now, um, the other aspect which is killing the, 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 the game at, at, the, at the youth level is our educational system, okay? I, I, have, I, have, I am of the strong belief that we need to review our educational system, okay? Our, our time, for instance, we spend about uh, seven years in secondary school. I'm not saying we should do that now. We have reduced it, though. But if you go to, the, if you go to maybe in Ghana, I'm, uh, let me use Ghana for example. I mean, people spend only three, three and a half, two and a half years in, the, second, half years in the secondary school. Yeah. Where is the time for, for, for sports? Yeah. You go to most of these uh, um, primary schools and uh, what have you, um, most of them don't have training grounds. They don't have playgrounds or even for, 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 for kids. So we have lost it. Mm. No, no time to catch them young, to groom them. No time for the, these students to, to, these kids to train, to develop their talents and what have you. The system is saying that at the age of two, the, the, the kids start going to school. They go there as early as, um, as early as maybe five o'clock, six o'clock. You have to hit the road with your child. Exactly. You drop your child there, four o'clock or five. You need to pick the traffic and what have you. But the point that, what is of significance to me is the number of time, the years. I think we need to review, especially um, the, the, the high school, we need to review the two and a half years. We need to even take it to, say, let's say, four years, okay, minimum. So that, four uh, years. yeah, so, and we, we, we need to factor into it uh, physical, physical education uh, and, 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 yes, and, the and the sporting activities mm-hmm. and how to, you know, tap the talent at that level. Most people were, at my time, most people were learning even how to play hockey at the secondary school. Yeah. They were learning to play so many things, table tennis, at the, at, the, at the secondary school. Nice. Now, everybody, if you put your, if your child is it's, it's in the secondary school or in the primary, all that people are concerned about, you just have to pass and go to, and get a good school and go get to the university. That's yeah, all. Exactly. That's all. There, there is, used to be the Ghana Academicals as well, which was, which was a base for the Ghana Black Stars. And then and Kumar had this great vision about... Ghana developing and getting these young boys very young at the tender age where they were being groomed to be superstars. Now, the problem now over the years is, is diminished along the line where you don't get the academicals anymore. But that brings me back to the next topic that I want us to look into. These young boys that are coming out, are great footballers that are coming out, They've been governed by the GFA, the football associations, the various associations we have in Ghana, managing the leagues and various uh, different boards. The course football is a great, it's, a, it's, it's very, very um, important to me when it comes to the great, uh, the course football. Do we, you raise a massive point, do we stick to the course football or do we stick to the academy system where these young boys are being groomed in academies by the FA? Now, because we need a regulation body to take control over this. Now, what we've had in the past is, like you rightly said, we've had individuals who are managing these academies and then trying to siphon these boys' money or whatever out of these boys and then make money out of them. But what we're trying to look at this moment, should it be a national policy? Because football's evolved now. 
We can't go back to the old ways where we used to play uh, coast football. So I believe that maybe we can start as an FA, we can start with an academy all over the nation in different 10 regions or wherever city where football lovers are and start grooming. What do you think about this idea? Well, I, I personally, I am a new structuralist. I am a new structuralist mm -hmm. and that's a new phenomenon. Um, we belong, we are the breed of part of the socialist and the blend of the capitalist system where you have, uh, you take the good things out of the socialist aspect of the social, you and then you the build the, the capitalism as the good thing of the mm -hmm. capitalism as, as, uh, side. So we are a blend, and we believe strongly in globalization. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I have always argued that the state has a major role to play, especially in a developing country. Mm -hmm. The state cannot shake its role in developing some of these things or in leading or laying the necessary infrastructure or guidelines for, for yes for for, for 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 it to take off uh, because if you take for instance coast soccer we have to sit down as a country africans we have to sit down and say looking at our context it's not everything that is done in europe that will fit in africa That's okay true. so we look at our context and say hang, hang on what can what will suit us okay um is it the coast system or is it the academy system? And, and or do we blend and see? Because, for instance, when I was growing up, before any, any league game, we had the coast guys, coast team matches being played. Playing the curtain the raisers. Curtain raisers, raisers and people, yes, curtain yes. Raisers. And we have, so if, if you are going to assist individuals, or if they, there will be a policy, let's say, for instance, you, you, you run a, a coast system, a, a coast club, okay? And... We are, you have been able to harness a talent or, or catch a talent or groom a talent. And this, sorry, this boy is, um, is, go, is moving out, moving out yeah. okay? And uh, he's, let's say he's moving to a foreign club. Yeah. We can come out with a policy that maybe you can have about 1% mm -hmm. of what the, 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 the boy ends, okay? Or the player mm -hmm. ends. That comes to you and then it, it will help you it to help you yes the, whatever the club gets well if the club if the, the boy even plays for say Hasbro Commercial and Tikotoko mm -hmm. when he's going out once you ha you you identified and groomed the talent mm -hmm. you ha you must have something all right mm -hmm. now we can say also as a country that look we have these retired players we can send them on coaching courses we can distribute them to the district level. We can be let, let them be associated with the district associ uh, district um, uh, what do you call district uh, councils, councils or what, yeah. yes or whatever. And we say, look, try and develop the talents. Yeah. Try and identify talents, and he must be rewarded. We can district assembly. Sorry, I was looking for the word right, assembly. District assembly. That is district assembly. So you, you've given them some training, they attach, they, they are assisting in talent hunting, they are grooming the boys. At the end of the day, they also benefit. Then we, we have a system where these boys will feed into our league system and then they will eventually feed into the national team or they will go out and what have you. Some, some have also argued, some have, some, a lot of people have argued about uh, the system of coast football. Uh, they've argued that over the few years we've had a problem with lots of players growing with injuries uh, because uh, the way we played our coast football then um, was was a bit rough and uh, we played on the patches on the streets and uh, what we call the gutter to gutter. <coughs> Football's evolved like you and I know and we're playing where in a, in a, in a terrain where uh, players are playing on a good turf. So I believe, I'm one, I'm one that believes that if we have to do it right, uh, we have to get it right. Because we can't go to the same old way of playing coast football, where now there are a lot of um, astroturf pitches, where there are a lot of artificial pitches being advertised all over, where world stars are even playing on. So what do we do, as Ghanaians? That do we? Because it's a major, it's a major, major, major challenge. Do we stick to our way of doing playing the old way coast football? Or do we, as a nation, take a bold stance and say that this is what the direction we're going? And so we're taking all these young boys through this rank. If you're good, we take you through it. It's a national policy, just like in Kruma and the rest done. Yeah, you see, that's what I said. That there has to be poli that, that we, we as a country must have policies. Policies. Or there must be a policy about developing the youth. 
and we must train people to develop the youth. It's not everybody, every coach who can. We must have coaches for youth development. Refresher courses as yes. well. Yes, we must have coaches for youth development. And we must provide facilities. Okay, we must provide facilities for that. Uh, you, you mentioned Ghana. And that's why I said, look, we have to look at it and say, which one is suitable for us? Is the academy system or the course system or a blend? Mm -hmm. Because the, the child must go to school. Now, when you talk about the academy, they take, take the child away entirely. Um, mm -hmm. What they are doing now, is it in our interest? Is it furthering the country's interest? Or is just, it is not. It, it may be that a private person is doing it. Fine, there's nothing wrong with a private person doing it. But then, at the end of it, how beneficial is it to the nation the as well? So we can come out with a policy and say, like this, let's blend it and see how, even if individuals are doing it, we have a certain standard, we have certain facilities. Look at the district assembly level. That was like, we can say that, look, every district must have at least two good playing uh, fields. Okay? Which can be done. Yes. I mean, we have the money. If we, we, if we want to do it, we can do it. We can say that, look, these are the, these are the times, let's say, vacation period, for instance, for the next three months, students, these kids are going to be at home. How do we structure it in such a way that we can have them groomed or we can have them prepared or we can train them? Benefit us. Yes, and benefit us. Okay? Because of, the, because of the fact that they spend little time in school relatively compared to our, our time, yeah. the inter-colleges and inter-schools inter competitions, we don't get them. You don't get enough colleges? No, well. we, don't, we don't even have time for them, as expected. Mm -hmm. We don't have time. Because it's, so it's all academic, 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 academic. Mm -hmm. So we need to sit down. That's why I said we need to sit As a country, I still think that as a country, we need to sit down to come out with policies about youth development, about how to tap talent, about how to grow talent, about how to even, they're moving out, mm -hmm. you, you see? And when we come out with the policies, we have to ensure the implementation. That's that the, has been the problem. That has been the bane of, of especially people in Africa, the people from Africa and from Ghana. You see, we have all the laws you can think of, but implementation is a problem. We need to wake up and realize how important sports is, how important, how far football can take us, how football can, can, can raise our image. Now, when you talk about Usain Bolt, for instance, he's a working industry. Yes. He's a working yes. industry. Yes. Okay? When you, those days when you talk about Michael Asian, when you have a football team, for instance, when Kotoko are playing, it's a whole industry. It was. Yes. Now we don't have we don't have a good tennis player, but uh, we won the Africa, we won gold. But how many people are being trained in terms of we are all over focusing on football, but there are other areas like table tennis, long tennis, boxing. Which we used to yes. do well in Atlanta. We have we, we, used to we do this, very well yes. Then. After Azuma Nelson, look at after Azuma Nelson, I caught it. Where are we now? We've been going down. Going down. We have this young guy coming up, Isaac Dogby. He did ex exceptionally fantastic. I watched him. Yes, time, yes, yeah. against uh, Edward. Uh, uh, very good, very yes, good. Yes, this fighting. boy from yes, yeah. Edward. Uh, Edward yeah. uh, Ka 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 Kakembo, Kakembo, sorry, yeah. Kakembo from Uganda. You know, so this is a talent. And then we have um, uh, this guy who is also being run, being promoted by Baby Jet or someone. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen that, that yeah, other guy yeah, with, like, yeah, with yeah. a fight as well. Yes. So, uh, the you fight. see, these, we, we, have, we have neglected boxing. You go to Ghana, we don't have any serious boxing gym. And boxing used to be one of the areas yes. that gave so, the DK Poison. Yes, and DK Poison. DK Poison. And 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 so and we have, all these because we don't have the facilities. Mm -hmm. We are not training these coaches. The coaches who are training these boys are doing, the, they're doing, doing it voluntarily. Well, but that brings me to our, our next point that I want us to look into. Uh, one of the major problems of Africa, and especially with Ghana, has always been the exodus of our sportsmen leaders. Mm -hmm. I think this area travels beyond just football, travels beyond football into other sporting areas. Mm -hmm. In some cases, we've had our athletes who are trying to naturalize for other countries because why they can't get the right training facilities. What do you think that as Ghanaians, because we've always highlighted the problems, we've always seen what we need to do right, what we need to do uh, to make everything work, but what do we need to do? What are the steps? What are the, what's the way forward for us as Ghanaians? To really get us going, because we where are atlas now. <laughs> we used to do the hundred jump, yeah. the hundred, the triple jumps, the hundred jumps. We used to excel. Now there's so much exodus of footballers, of atlas, of boxers. The least thing they'll jump on the next train to Thailand. The least thing they'll jump on the next train to Finland. 
you, where do we go as Ghanaians? What's yeah. the way forward? I think Africans, uh, African leaders are letting all of us down. I think. Oh, uh, you think it's a leadership? I think it's all about African leadership and not people not taking too much interest in the sports and what have you, not investing as expected. And I'm being very honest with you because uh, if we invest as expected and if we develop the games or the sports in disciplines as expected, these boys will not be leaving us as, 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 as you're talking about. They may leave though, but they leave maybe when they are matured and what have you. Some of them, they, they naturalize for other countries out of frustration. Mm -hmm. You know, they want equipment to train, they are not getting it. They are not being given the allowances, their bonuses and what have you. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes when you hear some of the stories, when they come back, when they tell you some of the things, to me, so embarrassing sometimes, I bow down my head in shame and you ask yourself, are we so poor that we cannot afford some of these things? It's so embarrassing, it's shameful to say the list. Like yes, training. you know, go to go to Ghana now and go to the airwork training. I mean, if you you can Google, you can check, you can Google down and look at the the state of the airwork, 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 airwork. Yeah, very appalling. Very 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 appalling. When they were expanding at the uh, when they were refurbishing Accra Accra Sports Stadium, some of us were strongly against the destruction of the Tatan tracks. No. I mean, during the Kufuor's era, people yeah. did not understand. No. That was where most of our athletes were training. Now they destroyed it and they took it to. Airwork and it's it's in, it's, it's in shambles. So you train, it. yes, you train at the airwork, airwork park now, and you you get in, you 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 carry injuries. Yeah. You know, it is nothing to write home about. And so, when we don't provide the facilities and we don't support our athletes, then there's a problem. And mm -hmm. then um, at the last African uh, uh, All Africa Games, our um, is it a pole vaulter? Yeah, pole vaulter. Yeah. Yes, he had to borrow. Which was a shame. vote from the person that he was competing with. That was a yeah. Yes. That was a and this this is about five hundred dollars. Are you saying as a country we cannot afford all this? So the point is that these guys get so frustrated and they don't have a choice. They'd say, Okay, let me naturalize maybe this country, I'll get better treatment and what have you. And and, uh, and that's the problem. Who has politics dominated our sports? Politics and sports are two bedfellows. You cannot they are inseparable. Okay, that's why? That's why I mean, yes, that's what I think, and that's what I strongly believe. Politics and sports are inseparable. They are two bedfellows. That is why Kwame Nkrumah used sports to unite Africa. He was you use the black stars. Exactly. You talk to the old black star players. Yeah. Nkrumah's policy was, to, and he used the black stars to unite Africa. Mm -hmm. And I, when I was working for Ashanti Golf Force, for instance, and we had the uh, Ashanti Golf Force Football Club, and yeah. uh, we we ruled, uh, we almost won the African uh, Cup. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, I was there. I watched, I watched. I watched. I watched. I watched the match. And you see, any time that we our team did well, production went up. Wherever we went outside the country, that was first thing that everybody would say, Oh, Ash Gold, go, Ashanti Gold Force, your Amazing. team. Before you even start talking about business. Amazing. You see, so sports or football or athletics or what a boxing, what have you. Look at where Azuma Nelson took Ghana, the level he took he took us to. Greater heights. Yes. Greater heights. So it opens doors. What they can do, where they can take us to, politicians cannot take us to. Where they can, if you go to some of these places, I remember when we went to some places that they knew of those days Abedi Pele. They knew of Abedi Pele. They didn't even know about a head of state. Uh, yeah, you see, they didn't know the name of a head of state. They, you knew see, Pele. they knew Pele. You went to a friend, went to uh, a Muslim friend of mine. He went to uh, Saudi Arabia and he said it was from Ghana. He said, Ghana. Oh, then one, one, was, one, one was raking. He said, So, Asamojan, Asamojan. Asamojan. Exactly. You see, so you see the level they can take it. So, I think, I think as a country, you don't have to joke. The, the, look at Britain. When they were trying to revive their their, their, their sports, they spent a lot of money, over two billion to to, to, to invest. Massive. When you go to America, why are they dominating tennis and what have you? Okay, when you go, the courts are there, the balls are there. I'm not saying African countries are so rich they can afford all these things, but we are not so poor not to be in a position to afford all these things as well. We need us as us, and you see when you doing when you invest in all these things, the good thing is that it wins these boys away from social vices. Mm. The youth they are taken away from social vices. It creates jobs for them. They are able to yes, they move ahead. They move. They climb up on the social ladder. They are able to provide for their families. Do you think that the family of Asian's parents will be poor? No. No. Asad no. Mwajan. He is a millionaire. Yes. Yes. One you see, the, one of the world's best yes. places. Yes. Okay. Of so so. 
and a, a lot of a lot of things are revolving around him. Mm. A lot of businesses are revolving yeah, around him. Going okay, to boxing. Yes, he's, he's promoting boxing and what have you. So the point I'm making is that if as a country we want to take these boys or we, these girls away from social, win them away from social vices. We need to be investing seriously in sports by creating the facilities, by helping to develop coaches, by uh, supporting them to, 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 hunt, to, to hunt for talent. But our budget, but, our budget we are also, for, for the Youth and Sports Ministry in Ghana, our budget uh, is, is, is the most smallest budget that is always uh, accredited to, the, to yeah. the Ghana Youth and Sports Ministry, especially when you take a state of Ghana where a country of about 26 million people approximately, where about 90% or 80% are the youth. And with that amount of our budget, that small budget, accredited to the youth. Mm. Are we serious as a nation? Are we looking forward to do that, that, is, that is not fair. I mean, in my view, it's, it's very unfortunate that we allocate such, a, such an amount of money for, for our youth ministry. And don't forget that it goes to pay the salaries and what have you. And therefore, it's very meager in my view. What we can do is that we can... We have, I'm not saying the state should, should bear all the burden. We can encourage the uh, corporate bodies to, to, get, to, involved to well. get involved. I remember very well some years back, volleyball, for instance. If you talk about volleyball, you talk about Cadbury. Okay? So, mm. and these things we can do. People come to invest. Some of these uh, corporate bodies, the uh, organizations, uh, multinational companies, they invest in our country. Mm. Uh, they are siphoning money from our country. And they, they are getting tax holidays and what have you. They could be asked to, to invest yeah. in sports yeah. and, and get, uh, I mean, what we call corporate social responsibility. Remember that uh, uh, the commercial sports stadium was built by, by UAC, uh, UAC or so. Yes, okay. yeah, yes you see, so, so corporate bodies could be also uh, a major part. A major part. They, they can be assisted. They, and, and the government will have to, to create an enabling environment. We talk about creating an envi enabling environment, but sometimes some of us don't see that the environment has been enabled uh -huh. enough. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. I am saying that we should help, we should come in with policies that will also assist corporate bodies to. Um, involve uh, to invest in sports. Give them that framework. Yes. Where they can so where they, yes, yes, where they can sports. they can have some tax rebates for yeah. all that they do. Mm -hmm. They say like if you take for instance um, the lesser discipline sports, table tennis, hockey, what have you. Those who go in, give them some assistance, give them some tax rebates and what have you. They may be saying they're doing, but I don't think it's 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 enough. But the other side of it too is that when the economy, as I said earlier, is also not going too well. Corporate bodies don't we, we, get yeah, that yeah, don't much. Get it, yeah. So it's 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 a it's a catch twenty two. But I don't think that as a country, as a nation, African countries are so broke that they cannot involve invest in sports as expected. Yeah. I think that we're not setting our priorities right, and that's the problem. Where where do you see Ghana sports? Not even football now. Where do you see Ghana sports in this twenty first century? Where do you what, what is the picture? Because from what we're getting, the negativity around our sports, the negativity around our young men and women, the rate of crime and everything is risen so up high. And there's been a massive talk about we not investing so much in sports like you just rightly said now. Now, where do we see the direction of Ghana sports leading, uh, leading the nation into a place where we can, we can see something bright come out of? Because we've seen it in the past. Azuma Nelson. A truck, a truck pusher, come out of boxing, becomes a superstar in the Hall of Fame now in New York. We've seen great, great things come out of sports. These are nothing new to us anymore. In the 21st century, things have changed, obviously. So where do we see ourselves as a nation? Sports leading us, especially with the youth of the nation having the most, being the most populated. Where do we see ourselves going for it, Kuru? Well, I, 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 I need to also say um, passion, eh? Passionate. <laughs> Passionate. Passionate. Uh, Mr. Jan, I need to say that uh, we haven't done too badly. Don't forget that we've been to the African, uh, to the World Cup three times. Yeah, in, uh, yeah 20, 2006, I was with them in, uh, in Germany, in Germany, our yeah. maiden uh, edition. Then they went to South Africa. And then we don't want to talk about Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, look at the level we took Ghana to, even though the Brazil uh, uh, fiasco also brought us a bit of shame. But... Talking about where we can, where, where I foresee the uh, the nation in the area of sports, I think that we need to rethink. We need to go back to the drawing board. We, you know, Africans we talk too much, and Ghana uh, Ghanaians we talk too much and we do do very do little. little. Exactly. So we need to move away from that. Mm. We need to move away from talking too much and doing very mm -hmm. little. I think that we need to uh, 
um, at, I may be overstressing this point. Sometimes you don't only need money to get things done. It's just the policies. It's the policies, the planning, and the way you do things. And you're setting your, setting your priorities. Okay? So if we sit down as a country, why was, why was Nkrumah successful? You may say that at that time, um, globalization wasn't as it is now, so people were not moving place, were not moving out so well, so he most of the time had them home uh, base and they could train and do all that. But that was the period. Now our period, I mean, what about athletics? Alexander and, 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 and others, where are they? Okay, well, how many at, at least at, le at least can we boast of now? Mm -hmm. Okay, we talk about boxing, we talk about um, uh, table tennis, we talk about long tennis. Where are we? We've lost our everything. We've lost so our we said, hang on, what has gone wrong? Why are we lacking behind? What is the problem? Mm -hmm. Okay, we go to the drawing board, we come up with policies, we customize them to suit our environment, and we see how we can get things going, and we can say that. Okay, for the, for, for the next five years, we don't expect to win anything seriously. If we do that, that's a bonus. The, the next plan. 10 years, exactly. where do we want to be? And we need to, when we are planning, we need to dovetail the sports policies with the educational system. And quite frankly as well, the Asians have come out very, very strong now. Mm -hmm. Where was China in, the, in sports in the last 10 years? Mm -hmm. Where was Japan in sports yeah. in the last 10 yeah. years? These guys now are dominating world of sports. It was proper planning, proper government investment, proper policies, proper thinking. Where do we want to go? And in, in, if we want to also develop the sports in, in Africa, in our part of the world, we need to look at our fiscal development. We need to look at dieting, okay, the food we eat. Very important. Yes, we need to be truthful and transparent with regards to the ages, uh, competition, and what have you. Okay, so we need to do all these things and be honest with ourselves and do the proper thing and see where we're going. Our leaders and policymakers should be a bit selfless. These boys, they know what happens. So if they are playing and if they get to foreign and when they come to Europe and they go back to the national level and whatever, they know what transpires. They see the difference. They see the difference. So I am saying that we have huge potential in Africa. We have, especially in Ghana and almost all the other continent, the North Amer the North Africans are streets ahead of us, yeah, because yeah. they've provided the facilities, the infrastructure, and what have you, and now. yes, and they, they are hunting talent, they are grooming, the, yes, they are, and so they are a bit ahead of us in terms of that. But in sub-Saharan Africa, where where we come from, the talents are there, but we are not investing and directing things as expected. Baku, it's been great talking to you. Thank you very much for having Viewers, me. Viewers, unfortunately, this is where time will allow us. Uh, I hope you rightly enjoyed yourself. I've been talking to Dr. Baku Fuswasari. We'll be discussing the state of African football and the exodus of African players and uh, where Africa can move forward when it comes to our sports and the role sports plays in our economy and in the development of our nation. On behalf of the team, my name is Kojo Ajay Jima. Stick around with us same time next week.